It's Tuesday, May 26. My name's Juan Brown. You're watching the Blanco Lirio channel, and this is the fourth in a series of videos on the tragic loss of Pakistan International Airlines Flight 8303 in Karachi, Pakistan. Unstable approaches has been a leading cause of late landing accidents in the airline industry for many years. And when we look at the preliminary ADSB data from flight 8303, we can see that this approach into Karachi was terribly unstable. Let's take a look at this preliminary ADSB data and once we get the data recorder from the aircraft, we'll be able to corroborate this ADSB data to a great degree of accuracy. First, let's take a look at the published ILS 25 left instrument approach procedure into Karachi and then take a look at the ADSB data from flight 8303. Here's an outdated instrument approach plate for runway 25 left into Karachi. Even though this crew is making a visual approach into the airport, airline crews follow the basic ILS guidance, the glide slope guidance, into the runway to help ensure that they perform a stabilized approach. Down here is the profile view of this instrument approach and it shows that at 6.3 nautical miles DME, that's roughly a, and from the end of the runway, the aircraft needs to be at 2,100 feet in order to intercept the three degree glide slope to give them the stabilized glide path into the runway. If that aircraft is traveling as fast as 160 knots, that rate of descent would be 849 feet per minute. A typical Airbus approach speed would be more on the order of 120 to 140 knots, which should give a descent rate of anywhere between 600 and 743 feet per minute. And of course, these descent rates vary slightly based on the wind, but the winds and weather were good at the time of this arrival. This descent profile also shows that approximately 20 DME from Karachi, based off of this VOR here, the aircraft should be at about 5,000 feet, flight level 500. Flight levels change as you go around the world. It's not always flight level 180 as the transition. Your typical descent profile should be along the lines visually of about three to one. For every three nautical miles out, you should be 1,000 feet above the ground. For example, and this is even if you don't have glide path guidance. This is just a rough guide to give you a rough estimate of how to make this descent. Now, of course, the FMS will give you a very well-managed descent on into the airport if you follow it correctly. But if you're just coming in visually, a rough wag to back up your data is 3 to 1. So at 3 miles away from the end of the runway, you should be approximately 1,000 feet above the ground. At 6 miles away from the runway, you should be approximately... 2,000 feet above the ground, and so forth, all the way on out. Now let's take a look at the actual ADSB data from flight 8303. Here's some rough ADSB data laid out with time on the x-axis and the altitude on the vertical axis, indicating that the aborted landing, or scrape and go as I say, occurred about 1434Z. If you're doing your standard descent rate of 3 to 1, for every three nautical miles, you should be an additional 1,000 feet high. Coming into the final approach fix, your speed should be approximately 180 knots, so you're traveling about three nautical miles per minute. So for every minute, or three miles, should be an additional 1,000 feet. Four minutes out, this aircraft's at 10,000 feet, when it should, in fact, be at approximately no higher than 4,000 feet. So this aircraft is more than twice as high as it should be, just based on this rough data, let's look at a more detailed view of this. Here's a graphic that shows the flight path of flight 8303 in blue, as opposed to a normal glide slope intercept flight path shown here in brown. And you can see that the flight path of flight 8303 is much too high to make a normal glide slope intercept. They were diving down for the glide slope, right down to the very end. In this graph, the altitude is graphed along with the vertical rate of descent, showing that at four minutes out, the aircraft is at 10,000 feet, where it should be 
down to 4,000 feet, and the crew is diving down to intercept the glide slope from above and achieving this vertical descent rate in blue of over 6,000, nearly over 7,000, briefly 7,000 feet per minute rate of descent as low as 2,000 feet above the ground. Completely unacceptable rate of descent. Even once established on the glide slope, if they even are here towards the last couple of minutes of the flight, they are achieving descent rates of over 2,000 feet per minute. While on the ILS, the descent rate should never exceed 1,000 feet per minute. On this slide, we can see the indicated airspeed in brown on top versus the calibrated altitude in blue down below. We've also added the runway threshold landing time of about 34 after the hour, where he was at 210 knots over the threshold when he should have, in fact, been closer to 140 knots. Everywhere between the runway threshold and beyond, the airspeed was in excess of 210 knots to 250 knots. Here at 2,000 feet, where he made that final dive exceeding 7,000 feet per minute, the airspeed exceeded 250 knots, when it should have been down to 180 knots. These are the placarded speed limits for the Airbus A320. To low, 250 knots to lower the, the landing gear. 230 knots maximum speed to lower the flaps to one. Normal landing flap settings for the Airbus are flaps three or flaps full. The indicated airspeed, according to the ADSB data, indicates that this aircraft got no slower than approximately 210 knots while on approach to Karachi. At no time was the aircraft at or anywhere at or near its appropriate approach speed and or flap limit speed for landing flap configuration. Airbus also clearly displays all these limits on the vertical speed tape as shown here. And anytime these limits are exceeded, you will get the CRC, the continuous ringing chime warning. along with the associated ECAM message. So what is it that we have to prevent unstable approaches? Besides all the technology built into the aircraft, it comes down to the performance of the aircrew. Standard operating procedures. Following the rules and following the rules consistently leads to a stabilized approach. Remember, a stabilized approach means that you got to be on speed, on glide path, all your checklists complete by 1,000 feet above the ground, and you should have your speed under control by no later than 500 feet above the ground on a visual approach. Crew resource management, how the crew works together as a team is what makes application of the standard operating procedures works. The crew, the pilot not flying needs to be able to talk, communicate clearly with the pilot flying that if he is not meeting the parameters, he needs to go around. By having a stabilized approach at a thousand feet and that airspeed under control by 500 feet, that include, that that allows the aircraft to accurately land on the runway, crossing the runway threshold at 75 feet, touching down within the first one-third of the runway and no later than 3,000 feet down the runway. Again, if those parameters are not met, the aircraft and the crew need to go around. Thanks again so much for your support on this channel and especially to all my Patreons over on all my patrons over on Patreon as YouTube is still demonetizing all the content from this channel on this subject. See you here. Thank you.